All right, and we're back. Game scheduled to start here in a couple of minutes. I'm joined by Aaron Tackle, illustrious head coach of Brentwood, Collingwood. <laughs> which, school, which school do you coach at? Collingwood. Collingwood, apologies. Collingwood. So if you're watching from home and you have a kid uh, going to school, feel free to send him to Aaron. I'll teach him how to play rugby. But the UVic roster, we got Brent Hamburg, Phoenix Mahler, and Owen Kokan in the front row. Josh Petrov and Brendan Kim at second row. Sully Curran, Jackson Jones, Murdoch, Casey. Good name, by the way. Chris Gamage, Angus Boyd Porter, Dylan Cleaver, Josh McIndoe, Lockhart, Lockhart McGregor, Morgan DiNardo, and Ethan Smith is the starting roster for UVic. Now, Aaron, I know you've had the opportunity to coach and work with some of these young guys in mm -hmm. the past. Who's the danger man for UVic? Who should we be looking out for today? Mike, I watched uh, the National University Championship back in November, and I really like the look of Morgan DiNardo, uh, younger brother of Riley. Uh, had some caps on the seven circuit. Uh, this guy's quick, he's elusive, uh, he can score tries from long range, so he's my one to watch on the right wing there, Morgan Donato. Maybe you can hear around me, hopefully you can. Okay. Awesome. Okay, teams are uh, taking the field here. We'll go through the Burnaby Lake roster. We've got Lalit Bardwaj, Evan Mackey, and Captain Bryce Warden in the front row. Cooper Johnston, Ish Malima, Dom Baptista, Jack Bolton, and the veteran Lucas Albernaz make up the rest of the pack. Moe Parada gets his first premier start at number nine, along with Ethan Turner at 10. Uh, Kimi Vunacharaga and Ezekiel Rossetti on the wings. Neil McLean and Scotty Barr, both from Oman, Northern Ireland, get the start in the centers. And Ethan Dromgoul is at 15. So it should be a good game. We will uh, get ready for referee Saro Turner to start the game. He's joined on the touch lines by Mark Abercrombie. Aber Mark Abercrombie, apologies. Um, I believe of Abercrombie and Fitch fame. I believe he's made quite a bit of money from uh, <laughs> trademarks on that. And Clint Lemkis on the other touch line. So kickoff's getting ready to start, and uh, we'll get watching here. All right, game kicked off there. Brendan Blake's taking it cleanly. There we see Moe Parada sends it to big Bryce Warden, the captain, takes the ball in. Bryce Warden, Burnaby Lake's leading try scorer this year. Get out, really? Yes, averaging almost a try a game. Okay. How many mole tries? A lot of them. A lot of pick and goes. <laughs> a lot of uh, actually, he has he hasn't been the beneficiary of most of the mole tries. He's uh, he's usually the guy at the front of the mall. But uh, so anyway, nice run there from number ten, the Angus Boyd Port Parker. Took the, uh, the clearing kick from Ethan Turner cleanly. Made some yards. It looks like Brendan Blake's turned it over. Now into Lucas Albernaz, former Canadian international. Second row, now getting the start at eight man. Neither Taituzzi nor Siaki Vicolani available today. So Lucas moves to eight. Yeah, he's no, he's no, uh, no guest of the eight shit. No. Nope. Tough, tough customer. Very much so. Has big, big hands. Easy to grab the ball. <laughs> He's feisty. He is that. Got that Argentinian blood in him. I really think Uvic, are, are, I mean, it's a dry day. It's a warm day. A little bit of wind. Um, I think Uvic are coming in here, and they're going to want to throw the ball and move it around. Um, really good counterattack counter opportunity early on. Lost the ball in contact. Um, and Burnaby have gone from being uh, deep in their 22. Not the best exit in the world, but now they've got a set-piece starter with a lot of options on and a lot of space in the backfield to use if they want it. Yeah, this is the uh, the first premier start of the season for Lalit Bardwaj, who's been a mainstay in the number one jersey along with Bryce Ward in the last few years. Elite known as a great scrummager, originally a Calgary guy. You see a great scrum there from mm. Burnaby Lake. Been walking about six, seven yards with it there. Uh, but uh, took a bit of an injury there in the summer playing sevens, believe it or not, and uh, started back in third division and worked his way back up and been a regular in the premier reserve team. and. Now back to Premier. So we'll be coming back to that penalty, but good to see Lalit back in the number one jersey. Luca Bradley's done a, a great job uh, in the number one jersey all year. Uh, he's uh, he's on the uh, coming in as an impact in the second half today. So we'll see if Lalit can reclaim his spot or uh, if he's just holding it for a first half for Luca. Yeah, really good start. That was a strong scrum. That That is going to set a marker for the rest of the game. Yeah, that was a... Uh, 
not great of you the uvic scrum coach i get i guess but i would think there's probably some thought to exactly what you were saying which was they might have a bit of extra speed or, or agility maybe in the back line and the forwards they might give up a bit of weight and certainly some uh some years so we'll see how the burnaby lake lineout goes here evan mackey's been pretty sharp most of the year good tempo this first lineup Ooh, that was a uh, not a good time to execution i think there was also a knock in a knock on there from uh, burnaby lake trying to retrieve it doesn't seem like any of the refs saw it but I did. Another nice take from Bryce Warden. Just a workhorse out there. And an obvious choice as captain runs the Burnaby Lake mini program here. Oh, what a line. There's Scotty Barr. They call him Scotty Bags for some reason. I don't know why that is, but that's his nickname. Albanos with the carry. Still up. And he gets it in, bowls it in. That's going to be a try for Lucas Albanos, number eight. Number eight on your game sheets, number one in your heart, Aaron. Yeah, you could be pretty disappointed with that first defensive set off. Uh, I, I don't think he was touched on that line break. No, I don't think so. You see the, uh, the replay just happened there. Lucas just manhandles people and uh, makes his way in. Yeah, good start for Burnaby. I mean, they haven't done an awful lot of work for the first five points of the game. Um, like I said, really quick tempo at the line out. Um, not the best execution, but got away with it. And... Really kind of first entry into the UVic half and they've come away with five points, maybe even seven. Yeah. Yeah, great start for them. Here we see uh, Ethan Turner. Last season uh, for Burnaby Lakes, back of the year. He's really matured into the number 10 position at this club, isn't he? He, You know, he has. He's uh, naturally a 15, but uh, not a lot of 10s kicking around. Not a lot of goal kicking fly halves kicking around. Uh, every time I watch Ethan play, I'm just really impressed with him. He just... It, it, He's got his emotions in check. He knows how the team wants to play, and he drives them forward. He's got a good kicking game. Ball's up, and it's through. Ethan's got a boot on. That's 7-0 for Burnaby Lake. He looks like he's put some muscle on, too. Look at him. Yeah, he's in the gym. Nice work, Ethan. Yeah, he definitely has. He's a... Uh a usual uh, choice for the man of the match in the boat race at the end of the games, but as a, uh, as a non-drinker, so. Lalit Bardwaj usually steps in for him. It's really helped the boat race. I bet the boys love a beer. They do. Shout out to uh, Lalit's uh, old club when he lived in Alberta uh, growing up with the Calgary Saints, which Lalit was on the executive and currently sits on the executive here at Burnaby Lake as well. So a young club, most of the guys on the executive tend to be young. I'm the only old guy, I think. And Albanos played for the Wolfpack. Albanos played for the Wolfpack, played for some B, uh, BC, played Argentina U19, but was born here in Burnaby. And I coached the Wolfpack. Did you? There yeah, you, go. Yeah, you go. He did say he owed most of his uh, skill at eight <laughs> men to you. Nothing. I know when Absolutely. he uh, when he did just uh, manhandle five people there on the way to a try, he did look at you and said thank you. Or gracias, is actually what he said. <laughs> Burnaby working well out of the half again here. Going through some phases in their own half. Here's big Ishmalima. Gets driven back. Nice line here from Ethan Dromgool. Oh, great offload off the ground. Oh. But that's the risk you, you take when you start playing sideways inside your own half. Uvic now got good, good turn of a ball. That might be a penalty for coming in the side. No, nope. Sarah's good with it. I thought that was a knock on. But Sarah's letting the boys play. You got to like that. Kimi Vunataraga thinks he sees some space. A lot of tackling out there. Uvic's doing a great job with the two-man tackles. Nice and low, bringing them down just like you teach. You know, a lot of people have said to me recently, Burnaby are playing a different brand of rugby this year. They like to offload in the contact. And we're, what, five, maybe six minutes into the game. And we've already had probably six or seven attempted offloads. That one not working so well. Mm -hmm. But a really good one off the ground. And they're right. Uh, you know, this is like, I'm seeing a difference in how the boys are playing this season. It's a different game plan. Head coach Francis Denny has uh, came in uh, as a former player for the club, played with the team last year uh, after joining the club uh, after a successful run against us with the English police. Uh -huh. um, and uh, yeah, came in with a game plan built around the players that were here and it's been pretty successful. A couple of losses for the season, but most uh, success in most of the teams every single Saturday. So got a lot of good bodies to work with and you know, he's a player's coach, I would say. Mm. So deals with the players pretty well. <clears throat> As a guy who coaches under him on the staff, I like him as well. It's English, so there's that. There is that. Yeah, there is that, so you can't, you know, he's not 100%. Nobody bats 1,000. 
<clears throat> Here we see UVEX line out to the back. They were uh, we, you and I just watched the Premier Reserve game, mm. which was won by UVEX 33-31, uh, and that was a uh, a mainstay of their reserve line that was going to the back, which yep. risky worked out well that time. Yeah, good breakout mob. Um, I've spent some time with Brendan Kim as a, a younger player. Uh, has played a lot at number eight. Has moved up um, into the lower numbers. Uh, in recent years, has played some time, I think, in the second row. Playing six today, good ball carrier. He's he's quick, he's explosive. If he gets a little bit of space, he will go. Yeah. Well, it looks like Burnaby Lake uh, has the ball back. We do have a UVic player down in the middle of the field as well. If, oh. I wonder Open if that... Number, number one? Burnaby putting themselves under a lot of pressure deep here. Yeah, it's tough trying to run it out of your 22. I much prefer a good kick myself. Especially Uvic only has one man back. Granted, he uh, looks like he's fast as heck, but there's the uh, the fly half. Looks like he's dropping back now to help out. But uh, the first few phases, the number 10 was up for Uvic, and there's only the one fullback back. So oh, he's still playing. <clears throat> still looking to offload as well. well. Love it. I don't know if that's part of Francis Denny's Here game plan. I guess if it works, Francis oh. probably say that that was the game plan. But it's risky. Yeah. Oh, Burnaby Lake uh, charging hard. Lee Bardouage. Nice tackle there from Jack Bolton. There we go. Uvic probing around the edges, trying to find a gap in the Burnaby Lake defense. Yeah, better be looking in control in the defense. They they want to stay really disciplined in this area of the field, and it looks like Sarah's got his arm out. So that. The discipline here, like this, this could be a kickable opportunity. It gives them the option to play, and they might even go to the corner. That's going to find touch. And if they do go to the corner, I bet you they're going to go to the back of the line out. You know what? I wouldn't take that <laughs> bet because that, uh, that seems like a given. If I was them, I'd go points myself. But So it looks like, was the, did, the, did the injured man leave the field? Yeah, he did. Looks the, like uh, someone's uh, uh, saying Brent Hamburg. There. Looks like Brent. <coughs> Brent Hamburg getting some work done. We've got number 18 on the field. Brighton Feldman. Brighton Feldman. Spent a little bit of time with Brighton with a Canada under 18s program. Really? Um, yeah, good good player, good prospect. A lot of young players in this UVic team. They are young. Um, they're Prem Reserves, a lot of first years in that group. They've played a lot of rugby, um, and I think they're really going to kick on and develop over the next couple of years. So the future's bright at UVic, but they are both teams, I think, a really young squad as far as the competition goes. The number 18, Brighton Feldman, has a big head. <laughs> that kick is good. So to make it 7 3. So Burnaby League. Burnaby Lake leads early, about 11 minutes gone so far. So wait for Ethan Turner to restart the game here. As we have a second, we would like to thank the Burnaby Lake's official insurance broker, Neil McLaughlin. Neil is a level two insurance broker servicing clients in British Columbia with their insurance needs in automobile, tenant, marine, commercial, and life insurance. If you find yourself needing quotes or any further information, give Neil a call at 604-518-6721. Nice high ball. Oh, almost taken in from Kimi, Kimi Vunataraga, but knocked on into touch. You so think we'll get the option here, scramble a line. Looks like they're going to go for the lineup. Wind's picking up a little bit, coming from behind us. It is. I can hear it on the uh, my headset. I don't know if they can hear that at home or if that's just us can hear that. But one of the cameras or one of the uh, the microphones really picking up some wind. We're fortunate to have the team from Underdog Productions here helping out with the video today. There's. Not sure how many cameras kicking around here. Four or five cameras kicking around the uh, the field here. And there's Brendan Kim. Told you. Oh, big contact there from Vunataraga. Kimmy introducing himself. To <laughs> Could be on wide here. Uvic looking to go. Kim uh, making some noise out there in the field. Got a dead leg. Doesn't sound good. No, he's making some noise. Vunataraga also down, though. <laughs> That's a big collision there. That was a good carry from Dylan Cleaver on the far side. Looks like he's turned the ball over. It'd be Burnaby's throw just outside their 22. No, it looks to be like Uvic ball. Uvic ball, okay. So 
So we'll see if they go to the back again. That's an oof. Burnham under lots of pressure now. Good go forward ball. He's lost it in contact. Albanoz going the wrong way. Albanoz was going the wrong way. Ran it back into his own goal line. You don't see that very often. I guess they wanted the five meter scrum. <laughs> that is what it is when you uh, take it back in your own, right? Five meter scrum for the other team. Okay. Yeah. Well, the bad news for Burnaby is they're only five meters out from their own trial line. The good news is they absolutely dominated that first scrum. They're going to need another one like that to get out of here. Yeah. Well, let's see if uh, Warden and Bardwage and Evan Mackey can uh, pull that off. Last one was going backwards like they were on skates. I guess the, uh, the fashion now seems to be the return of a fake collar on the rugby jerseys. He came back with uh, Macron when they first started sponsoring Scotland. All of a sudden, they came back with a little weird collar. Okay. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan? Not a fan. Don't like it. Have a collar or don't. Don't be in between. <laughs> Commit. <laughs> There's a line from uh, Parks and Rec from Ron Swanson. Don't half-ass anything. Whole-ass everything. Or well, I'm not sure what the purpose thing. of a collar would be on a rugby jersey. Well, that's just it. I know when I used to be a player, back when they all had uh, collars, we used to cut them off to get rid of them. So... Well, Uvic look like they've secured possession, and they're going forwards. Burnaby pressure under a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. And looks a snipe. Like looks like Uvic's And a in. try. Is that the number nine? Was it Chris like Gamage? Out. Chris Gamage. Also an Alberta boy, I believe. Oh, really? I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm confident he's from Alberta. Yeah. Well, that's going to make it... Did they give the try? They did. Yep. That'll make it 12 to 7. With a kick to come. Good turnaround there on the scrum from Uvic. While we wait for the kick to come, we'd like to thank DMS Mechanical. DMS takes a forward-looking mindset to mechanical construction and service. They're your trusted source for all your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs. Give them a call at 604-291-8919 or visit their website, dmsmechanical.com today. Well, here we go. Angus Boyd Parker setting up to try to add to Uvic's lead. If this kick goes through, it'll make it 10 to 7. <laughs> kick is up and it's through. So it's 10 to 7 for Uvic. They're taking the lead. Yeah, a couple of mistakes by Burnaby there. I think, um, you know, from the kickoff, we had it was very close to the touchline. And we had uh, just fumbled into touch, turned the ball over, and then trying to play out of uh, out of their 22. I, I really appreciate the, the willingness to play, but then you, you've got to appreciate the risk that that comes with. So um, Burnaby have been in Uvix 22 once and scored once. You probably need to think about getting back down there again sometime soon. Yeah, it, uh, running it out of your 22 is a high-risk maneuver. Better to play it safe. You don't hit on 15 if you don't have to. Good contest. Good contest there from Cooper Johnson, taken by Bryce Warden. Now moving out to the speed. Here you have Scotty Barr. Looking dangerous. Two touches and what was the half break there? Talented rugby player. Done a great job uh, wrapping up Malima. He's a, a big load to take down if he gets moving. And uh, you've done a good job of corralling that. So, Again, that's a strong two-man tackles they've been working with the whole time here. We'll see how Moe Parada plays today, going up against a tough, uh, tough customer there, and Chris Gamage, so in the nine position. Ethan Dromgul trying to make a few extra yards on the field. See Parada, ball's going to end up in Lucas Albernaz's hands. They really slowed the ball down in that breakdown. They did. I think if, if Burnaby can just get a couple of consecutive quick rucks, they might 
put Uvic under a little bit more pressure, but they seem to be slowing. Down. Every second ruck seems to be slowed just a little bit. Yeah, they're contesting one well, over the top there. Evan Fast Mackey almost found a seam, but fastball might stretch them a little bit here. Yeah, they're looking to get the ball wide. Another offloading contact. You see the veteran Neil McLean. The half break for Neil. Neil's playing great this year. Had his first premier start of the season last Saturday after uh, playing with the reserves most of the uh, most of the season. Dom Baptista. Yeah, good attack. Really playing on top of the UVic defense here. Offloads in contact, pick and go around the ruck. Lots of options. Could be on on the right-hand side here. They got numbers if they use them. Ethan Turner took it himself. Might have wanted to get rid of that. Thought he saw a, thought he saw a hole. But Uvic closed it. Bernie Blake now down inside the 22. Oh, there's Bardwaj. Trying to bull his way through. Just needed somebody on his shoulder there. He got, got his hands free. He could have maybe got the ball away. Yeah. You did a great job of taking down uh, uh, Evan Mackey, sorry. There's the big Puma. Penalty advantage, Sandro's seen something in that breakdown, not rolling away by the looks of it, so everything's on here. There's contact on McLean, he kept his feet though. Now Parada gives it away, right, but for the penalty point. in front of the post. I gotta think Bernie Blake would go for three points here and tie it up. Physical game. Lots Very of, physical. Let's body slow off the ground. Apologies, like Michael Vick. Set up behind us, if you can hear that. <laughs> oh, there is a dog fight going on behind us. Really? <laughs> okay. Pretty much choose a scrum as opposed to three points. I mean, maybe they walk it in from this far, but I got to tell you, take the three points, Aaron. Take the three points. Yeah, definitely rolling the dice on this one. This will be interesting. Yeah. Especially after that last scrum. I mean, I guess the guys in the front row, Bryce Warden's the captain. He's a tight head props. So he must have some idea of what happened and what went wrong there, but. Loves a scrum. Oh, he does love a scrum. He's a, he's a very good scrummager. And they take another penalty, so if that's all you can hope for. Yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely think they should have taken a uh, three-pointer there. I think they have another chance to now. Well, what do I know, Aaron? What do I know? Got to tell you, I watched Wales under 20s first half yesterday against Italy under 20s. Italy scrummed for seven penalties in the first half. Really? They are absolute monsters. How many yellow cards were Wells? None. Really? Unbelievably. See, that, <laughs> that is the issue. And that is why if Bryce is trying to draw a yellow card, it's not coming. The refs do not give yellow cards and scrums anymore. Mm. They don't. They say they do. The laws say they should, but well, they won't. This is kick. Now, yeah, Take now, it from the wrong place and we'll come back. Like, I don't even understand that. Like, that is now the third UVic penalty scrum. We're going to be, like, setting up for another penalty or another scrum, trying to pull another penalty. But, Sarah, they're not going to get any further, and Sarah's not going to give any of these guys a card. So, why? Aaron, you're a better rugby mind than, you, than uh, I am. I'm slightly taller. Yeah. I why? just changed, I've changed the laws. I, we, um, well, I'm going to hop back. And uh, When I was working for BC Rugby, we had the... Um, How was that, anyway? The good, PRC... Good enjoy that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the PLC there. championships, we ran a um, like a modified set of law variations where if uh, there was any kind of penalty free kick at the scrum, you, you just tap and play. Like, let's just let's get the game moving. We've been here for what feels like three or four minutes now. We haven't set a scrum. Um, I know at the international level, people people complain about this a lot. It just it's a lot of standing around with nothing much going on. People that love a scrum, Bryce Warden is listening back. I listen. I love. I love a scrum. I'm all with me. I'm saying that if any any other penalty that someone get, consistently gets over and over and over again, the referee will give a yellow card. They don't do it in the scrums anymore. It's it's not advantageous to a uh, to a, you know the stronger scrummaging team anymore. There's just no advantage Off. to being better. Albernoz is just Albernoz with a straight over try. the top of the Uvic defense. Number eight, Lucas Albernoz with another try. Hopefully, we can get the replay up on this. His second try of the game. Here we see it there. 
Nice offload from Ethan Dromgool. Lucas bowls over someone. Yeah, and Boyd Parker going straight over the top of him. Yep, puts it down. Beautiful try by Lucas Albernaz, his second of the game. So we'll see Ethan Turner set up here for a conversion. Okay. So Ethan Turner sets up. Try to make the score 14-10. Definitely within his range. Kid's got a great boot. Works really hard on it. Had a bit of a, a sniff with the Canadian Sevens team there. Uh, oh, just yeah? at the end of the, the yeah. end of the summers out in Victoria for a few weeks. But, okay. Which I thought he would be a great candidate for it. This is pretty close to the last one, and he struck the last one really well with the wind at his back. Oh, no, shank that one. So that's going to uh, stay at 12-10. Okay, Uvic getting ready to do the restart here. Angus Boyd Parker. He looks like an Angus. Just doesn't he? He I really does. Hook that one. And it's been played. Did Baptiste actually play that? Oh, I think he oh touched it. Oh my gosh. Oh! <laughs> well, great return. Jackson Jones. <laughs> Jackson Jones. Throwing up the Vikes horns. What a finish. Yeah, they gave him that one. That's not going to go down as try of the year, is it? That one? That one might for you, Vic. <laughs> I believe it'll come up in a court session uh, <laughs> <laughs> on the Burnaby Lake side. Try of the year for you, for you, Vic. Court session at Burnaby Lake. It also looks like Ethan Turner took an injury on the play. So that, that really couldn't be going worse for Burnaby Lake. So, time to regroup there for Burnaby Lake. That uh, try will make it 15-12. Our scoreboard on the screen is a little off. It's actually 15-12 for Uvic with the kick to come. So we'll see if Angus Boyd Parker can make this sport in a beard. I think it would be better with some, uh, some chops, you know. He shaved off. The beer just went with some chops. Struck well. Driven it. No, wide though. I tell you what, Mike, we've had a, almost no ball in play in two tries <laughs> in the last couple of minutes. Yeah. It's been scrum, 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 and then a little bit of play, and then a, a squiffy kickoff, and then we've just run it in and had a try the other way. Let's see if Ethan could make a, a contestable kick in. The last one was good. This one looks pretty good, too. We're going to get possession back here. Well done. <laughs> Baptiste took that one cleanly. Bardouage is wrapped up. Out the back door. Bolton probably, uh, I think, uh, the play was to get the ball to McLean, but he probably would have been better just... Taking that himself and passing to McLean. I think he had the hole there. Mm. I think the Uvic defenders were surprised he stopped and turned and passed. Angus has got a pretty good left foot here. He struck the last one well. I would expect this to be at least halfway into Burnaby's half where it goes out in a touch on the far side. Excuse me, right foot. <laughs> good strike though. Out of bounds, a try from Ezekiel Rossetti to keep it in, but found touch. Now, there's not a lot of deception in this UVic lineup. They walk in, they kind of just use the space that's available to them. And then go to the back. And go to the back. Uncontested, though. I mean, it's working. Brendan Kemp. I 
Nice clear out there from the UVic forwards. But number 15's got some speed, I'll tell you. Ethan Smith. Oh, Angus Boyd Parker, one man to beat. Could offload off the ground, keeping the ball alive. If this ball comes out, there's a massive overlap on the right side. Pick and go. Another try? No? Just short. He's held up off the ground. Looks like the ball's been turned over and Burnaby going to come away. Yeah. And they're going to play. Ish Molina. <laughs> <laughs> now Ethan's going to find a really good touch finder here. That's going to go out. He's put a good 40 meters into that kick. Well done. Well, Uvic did an awful lot of work there and got within inches of the try line. And they're going to back it back up about another 35 meters out. Plus one on this line out. We might see a mall from Uvic on this one. Uvic to the back. Now Lucas has really swum through and spoiled this one, so that will just go down. We'll turn that into a ruck. Might be an opportunity on this right-hand side if they come this way. Bryce Warden making a nuisance of himself. Oh. Oh, could have been something if uh, Scotty Barber been able to take that cleanly, but... So we'll be coming back to the knock-on. So two knock-ons. Two knock-ons. Better be able to put this ball in into the scrum. I'd love to see Burnaby play off this. Both centers have looked deceptive. They're both solid rugby players. Yeah, no, I think it's really worked for them. Kimmy has made good ground on the on this left wing. I'd love to see us play. <laughs> we can have a, another free kick at the, at the scrum UVic this time. Angling in, it looks like the uh, signal from, or is it early? Couldn't tell you. At least we're playing. A lot of scrum penalties this game. You think do a great job of uh, holding Dylan, on. Dylan Cleaver with a half break coming in off his left wing, and they're going to play back to the other side. There could be options on here. Elite finding himself in a lot of space. Going to be desperately calling for players on the far side. It looks like they've scrambled. You think do a really good job of moving if that, that ball. bounce as well. He could be in again. Good bounce. Quite isolated. It looks like he might be held up off the ground for this one. We come back to a penalty anyway. Sarah's got his arm out for a penalty. Angus has left the ball behind. Double blast. Could be trouble. At least a talking to for Bryce. Sarah's pointing at a lot of things all over the field. Burnaby really needs to uh, organize themselves a little bit better on defense. They got six guys to their left, whereas Uvic has one guy. We're playing. Nice Great. tackle from Turner. Really dominant tackle by Ethan. Does really well. Uvic getting close. I'm knocked the ball on. No, oh, knocked it on. Well, the last uh, scrum turned into a penalty for Uvic. The four or five earlier were penalties for Burnaby Lake, and then we had a penalty, I think, for UVic. So. And a couple of free kicks thrown in for good measure. Yeah.
Juvik going with one in the backfield here. They clearly, I think that they may be feeling this pressure of Burnaby showing some willing to play from deep. Ethan taking a place deep in goal here to exit. But the scrum's going backwards, and Albanoz has picked up and played. Getting a little closer to the sideline. I think they'll go to uh, Turner here after one more. No, no, kicking it here. Nice boot on him. Finds touch just inside the 22. I think he would have liked for a little bit more than that. Definitely. Tough, though. Right footer, that close to the touch line. Sure. So, fun fact for you, Mike. All right. The Uvic number four, Josh Petrov. Mm -hmm. Less than two seasons ago, was playing at outside half. Hmm. Uh, recently converted to the second row. Tall boy, great skills. Yeah. Um, and is really finding uh, finding a place for him in the in the Vikes first team, in the second row. Well, you know, if you got someone who can play ball, nice to have him in the second row. Yeah, the uh, speed and feet on this number fifteen is impressive. Not often you say stories like that about players converting from from uh, outside half to second row. No, no, you usually don't. Well, refs decided if we're going to go line out or uh, scrum there. They decided line out. So we see what Evan Mackey has. My guess or hope is that they do not go to the back, <laughs> somewhere safer. <laughs> Front or middle is where they should be going, I think. And it looks like that's what Juvik are defending, so. And drop to s a late change. Okay. To a Juvik line out. Hmm. Mr. Abercrombie, having a say? Likes to be heard. Overthrow to Evan Mackey. That's a big missed opportunity. It is. That's, <laughs> should have gone to the front. Awful lot has gone wrong for that to uh, to be the outcome. Should have went to converted center, or converted second row Josh Petrov. At yeah. The front. Nice kick from uh, Ethan Turner. All right. And big. a great take there. We'll see the ball kept on the ground here. Better be in good numbers. Ethan on Ethan tackle. Turner on Smith. Brighton Feldman with a really good carry at the middle field. He's released, stood up, and he's going again. Two Burnaby Lake players down. If Uvic can uh, yeah, capitalize on this. left here, if they can stay square. A couple of key defenders in Ethan Turner and Jack Bolton, both down. Bolton adjusting his shoulder, trying to get back into the play. Ethan Turner now heading back. Oof. I think Kimmy's got that one covered. Yep. Doesn't call the mark, wants to play. Good on you, Kimmy. Right under the high ball. Looks like that'll be a uh, line out for Uvic. Burton Lake has a player needs some attending to. Two of them actually. Turner and Bolton. Referee's having a real discussion. Give it a try. A try. I'd love to see the replay on that one, but we don't have it in front of us. No, we don't. <laughs> Lots of discussion there between uh, our referee, Sarah, and the touch judge on the far side. The Kimmy must have lost control of the ball somehow in that, in that space, and it got turned over in contact. Perhaps Burnaby Lake should stop playing the ball inside the 22. I think he probably could have called the mark there. Just protect it and then get it out. Mm. Cool. We must be pretty close to going in for half time. Uvic really starting to stretch out. 10 points in front with a kick to come. Yeah. 
Angus is kicking this one into the wind. That's why he's having to drive it quite low these last couple of kicks that he's had. Let's give it a good whack again. It might get there. Nope, just wide. Well, Uvic currently up 22-12. I got about two minutes to half. Don't think there was a lot of injury time. I shouldn't think so, no. So Burnaby needed another contestable kick here, and they need to get into this quarter of the field and just and start to play, speed these rucks up, carry the full ball over the game line, and just get this ball moving. Uvic, on the other hand, could probably start to look forward to half time now and closing this this half of rugby out. Catch the kickoff. I think they they haven't even been in the last couple, so they really need to be in this contestable kickoff, control the ball, and then look for some territory down the field. Uvic do have possession. They've secured it really close to the touchline here. Elite looking to hold the player up. That's the tackle, knees to ground. Uvic throwing the ball around. And number 15, Ethan Smith has some speed. He's got some moves. Going to put himself under pressure here. He's kicked into a freight train, though. All right, so Burnaby have got the ball back. Now they've got to threaten. They've got to start going forward, carrying this ball over the game line, speeding the rucks up. Nice line from Jack Bolton. Drum goal on the far side. Uvic have really gone after the ball in the ruck. You counter reckon well, they're very aggressive. They're a little disjointed in the defensive line that time. They're in trouble here a little bit. There Ethan Turner sees a gap. He's going to go through. He's going to go through untouched. Untouched. Yeah, that last phase, they seemed really disconnected. Some, some players came up, others just dropped off. Just all over the place for the following phase of play. Certainly have a chat about that behind the post. We were hearing that uh, on the far side, you could definitely hear a shout of kill, kill, which often in rugby is uh, a connected, it's almost a call for line speed. They've got an attack to an edge. They don't have to defend one side of the field. So you often see lots, lots of line speed, lots of pressure, and I just didn't see it. Yeah. No, they left a big gap there in the middle. Kill is often the call to for line speed? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So often teams, when they get so close to a touch line, they only have that open side of the field to defend. They're not worried about a blind side. Mm -hmm. So typically you'll have 13, 14 players on that side of the ball, all on their feet. So you can really get after it in defense. You don't have to worry too much. Um, you know, you've got lots of people, good spacing, and you can just really go for it. So yeah, lots of teams use kill fire you know words like that so when you hear it you often get a reaction from everybody okay this is one we're really going to go after and we're going to be aggressive and uh, I just like i said didn't see it but quite an <laughs> really entertaining game of rugby we're yeah. getting really close to half time here we've had lots of tries are we both are we both in bonus points here? Is this four tries each? I don't think so. No. no? Albernaz has two. Ethan Turner has one for Burnaby Lake. I believe the scoreboard you're looking at down there is actually incorrect. I think okay. it's Burnaby Lake has nineteen and Uvic has twenty two. Gotcha. So Uvic has three tries. Both teams have three tries. I think we're gonna see Uvic counter again. Love this open field running. Okay, so good return from, from uh, Uvic here. They've kicked off. They've gotten the ball back. They're in good position. Burnaby now, getting close to halftime, they have to be really disciplined. Penalties will really upset things before halftime. So they've got to be really disciplined. And we've got another line break. I think that's McKindo. He's almost through. Number 14 is Morgan DiNardo. Oh! Sarah's got his arm out. Brendan Kim's off on a run. 
I think we're going to see another try. Yep. Tries in. Josh McKinda with the break, supported by Riley Donato. Again, two young Canadian players. Would that Donato be uh, a relative of, I think maybe the kid's name is Riley. Played a bit Riley, with CW. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, played in the sevens program. Um, yeah. Riley is, uh, I'm pretty sure he went on the Canada under 18s tour. Uh, it will be Canada to 20 eligible. Um, along with a lot of these UVic bikes, actually. Yeah. There's probably, oh, I'd, I'd say, at least five or six guys that are eligible for the under 20s program, which will be coming up this summer. Yeah. Under the uh, guidance of their new head coach. Your buddy. My buddy. That goes through. I think that makes the score 19 to 29 for UVic. Going to try to get some clarification on that at the half. But uh, we're going to uh, take a break. We'll be back in 10 minutes for the second half. All right.
All right, kick is up. We got a restart here from Ethan Turner. Kicking deep to UVic. Scores 27 19 for the students. Nice kick. Found some ground before it went into touch. They'd be happy with that. Nice hot sunny day. Beautiful day. Looks like there's a change in the Burnaby Lake lineup. Luca Bradley and number 17 has come onto the field. Lily Bardawaj uh, taking a rest for the second half. Nice take Good from Lucas Albertos. Burnaby Lake setting up for them all. They've had a lot of success with that. Yeah, Sarah Turner got that. Looked like one of the UVic uh, guys, number four. Had uh, worked his way around and touched the ball carry. Can't do that. Yeah, this mall's got some steam left in it. They should keep ride this out for as long as they can. They've already got the penalty, so it's a matter of how many penalties they can get. Sarah looks well, like he's put his arm out again. One. The UVic boys screaming for a turnover there. So I think probably fairly legal on that turnover, so we're going to go back for the, uh, that mall penalty. Good start from Burnaby. Good line out. Good mall. That'll put some pressure on. Yeah. They've done, uh, you know, they've had success every time they get down inside UVic's 22. Mm -hmm. So getting back down there would uh, set them up for another one. Had uh, two tries from Albernaz and one from Ethan Turner. So it looks like they're down a few yards outside the 22. I believe they should try to do the same thing. Going quick. Albanel's up in the middle. That ball's well the set. Oh, Chase McCrum, uh, sorry. Chase McCrum is also on for Evan Mackey. So there's a new hooker and a new loose head. Isolated. Yeah, Chase McCrum taking it himself. Luca Bradley trying to uh, get over the ball. Parada gets the ball out to bro Jack Bolton. Cuts a nice line. Yeah, I could work from Jack. He's back up on his feet and he's off. Yeah, it wasn't held down, wrapped up there. I am having trouble seeing the numbers on the back of the UVic jerseys. They're not huge. That's what she said. He <laughs> oh, <laughs> fits through again! You know, you can't have one guy shooting. One guy shooting disrupts the whole line. So that's another try for Meath and Turner. Should make the score currently 27-24 with a kick to come. The Ethan Turner's a beauty. I was, uh, I was surprised. I told you they got a bit of a try there with Canada 7th team and I thought he would have been a, uh, someone they would want. The kid's got moves, he can kick. Great defender, not just tackler, but great defender. Mm. Played a bit with the junior, I think maybe BC 7s when he was a kid. Yep, but didn't get yep, much, sure uh, did. much look. Never went to Sean again, St. George's. Doesn't get much of a look. Is that a shot at private schools? Is that a quick one? Uh, if you read into that, you might see the exact okay, opposite. Okay, fair enough. Right between the posts should be an easy one for Turner. Kicked it back into Burnaby Lake. So 27-25. No, 27-26, sorry. Uvic now leads by one. So a few changes in Burnaby Lake there at the half. I don't know if I see any from uh, the UVic side. I'm not seeing any. Ball's up, can be taken here by Ezekiel Rossetti. Bit of a deeper kickoff. Rossetti's got some moves. Gets a foot into touch. Nice tackle there from the UVic number nine. Oh, Gamage definitely felt that one. That was a big collision. Yeah, he, uh, he got the worst of that one, but he made the tackle. That's all you ask for. Hold on, Chris. Good effort. Ezekiel really got himself out of a tight corner there, didn't he? He did. So Sarah's looking for Chris, and he's a long way behind him. He's over here, Sarah. Getting colder. Getting warmer. Oh, there he is. Right. You got him. He doesn't want to talk to you. He's fine. No, he says he's fine. Maybe just a bit of a stinger. It, it, it was wasn't his contact. head. It wasn't his head in the contact, but he took an awful load of weight it was through a, his shoulder. Yeah. 
Ezekiel Rossetti made himself about 250 pounds there in that contact. No, shoulder, he's fine. He's coming back. Hey, good, tough kid. Got a bit of beef. There you go. My guess they're going to the back. Yeah, a bit of we going to start defending the back, you think? No, nope. just going to keep going with the middle and the front. Mm -hmm. Not straight, though. There you go. I thought there was a few of them, but I didn't think Burnaby Lake went up and really challenged. That also might have been a little not straight, but since they didn't challenge, nobody's going to call that, or at least I wouldn't. But, uh, and that one there was up, and uh, yeah, I mean, listen, if it ends up on the wrong side. All right. Strap in, everybody. Let's see how many scrums we're going to have this time. Burnaby Lake's added some weight here in the second half. Bradley and McCrum, both heavier than their counterparts. But Bardwaj, a uh, talented scrummager. So. See, so scrum in. Nice flat, backs. Good job done by both sides. That's a good scrum. Well done, everybody. Looks like Burnaby Lake be looking for a penalty. Forward. They've got it. Advantage. You've it completely disintegrating. Yeah, the uh, the tight head side just went down. <laughs> Lucas just playing with his smile on his face. Just wants to run into people. Ooh, pass just didn't go to hand. Be cleaned up by Vunitaraga on the far side. It was still under penalty advantage, so. Am I crazy, Aaron? Does beer taste better when it's hot out? Oh, it certainly does. I've had some when it's cold and it's also pretty good, but Chase McCrum, the ultra athletic. Ooh, well the high done, ball for Bradley. Now Moe Parada with oh, the offload, 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 hook. Offload. Should not have done that one. But Moe's having a great game, by the way. And Rossetti, last seen playing scrum half for the Burnaby Lake third division. Oh, D nobody there. Oh, is oh, Jack going to get there? Oh, what a bounce. That is a beautiful kick. Defense definitely optional at the moment for both Holy. these two teams. It's all out attack. Ezekiel Rossetti is a tremendous rugby player who has gone up and down through Burnaby Lake's Premier Reserves. He's been playing third division for me most of the year. And then just due to a severe injury and unavailability <laughs> thing over the last two weeks, has been called back up to the Premier Wing. And Zeke's a beauty, one of my favorite players. Uh, he's doing well, isn't he? Yeah. Like I said, he just sidestepped him his way out of a phone box down here off the kickoff. Yep. Got the team going forward and... <laughs> Quite a speculative kick across the field. I'm not going to lie. There wasn't anybody there for, for a little bit, but Jack came out of nowhere, got the bounce. Heck Burn of a kick. Burn be ahead. And yes. we definitely got bonus points now. Yeah, I've, yeah, they definitely do. That was the fifth try for Burnaby Lake. So it's 31-27. I, uh, I believe both teams have at least one bonus point now. So Tough kick one here for Ethan Turner. Chase McCrum with the with the line break and offload and offload again. Chase one of the craziest, most athletic, awesome guys you've ever seen. That mullet was flowing the in the wind. Is flowing. Kicks up. Yeah, great shot. Great shot. That might be in. Oh no, no way! Oh. Just went to the other side of the post. So thirty-one twenty-seven for Burnaby Lake. Is your score? Ball's in. Is there a new hooker in for uh, Uvic? White headgear? See a new player? We'll see. Oh, off the outside of the boot that time from Ethan. He didn't get anywhere near no. as much as he wanted off that one. That'll give a really good starting point for Uvic. Yeah, not yeah so this one. does look like a replacement. Jordy. Jordy Auger. So it's two front row replacements for Uvic and Jordi Auger and Brighton Feldman who came on. Brighton Feldman, sorry. We do, do still have an, a number two, Phoenix Moller, on the field. That hooker is throwing from inside the park. Feet not on the touch line. Well, he's lost the ball in contact and knock on by Uvic. If you're uh, throwing, do you have to have your feet on the touch line still? Or can you just some throw part of your wherever? foot must be touching the line. Huh. Until the ball is released. Fair enough. 
You would definitely say the momentum swing is in the Burnaby's favour here. They've, they've scored, they're back on attack. Numbers yeah. are good on this side of the field. Let's see what they can do with it. Good offload, line break. Needs some support runners. Bryce Wood on the outside. Offload. Big Ish Malima. He's got some speed for oh, a big he's guy. It's going to take a lot to bring down, but Uvic look like they're scrambled. Malina. Far side of the field looks open. But a five on two out there. Dromgul might keep it himself. He's in, and uh, they're going to let him go for a while. Definite momentum swing with Burnaby now. Yeah, they got their uh, their tails up, as they say. Oh, we got a replay back on the screen. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Is that the replay? I missed the replay. I wasn't Was that live? I don't know. No, no, it's not live. <laughs> we got something. Yeah, well, heck of a try there from Ethan Dromgul. Started from uh, a beautiful line by Dom Baptista. I want to say Port Moody secondary, but for some reason I also think Terry Fox. So, I don't know. Dom's from somewhere out there. Great player, though. Great rugby player. Former third division MVP. Just a little shout out to my thirds. A lot of guys in the field right now with third div uh, experience, by the way. <laughs> so I'll throw that out there. Not just Ezekiel Rossetti and Dom, but Chase McCrum. Bryce Warden. All notable Burnaby Lake third div guys on the field. Well, that has been a big momentum swing here in the first five, ten minutes of the second half. Yeah, I'm loving how many tries we're getting in today. It's fast-flowing rugby. The last two weeks have been defensive slugfests that I've watched. So yeah, 15-5 out here last week. 15-5. Now we're yeah. out in the sunshine and we've got a try-fest. Yeah. Ethan Turner. That's in. Ethan Turner's got his fourth conversion of the game. 38 27 for Burnaby Lake. It looks like Marcus Lott on the field in 23 closest to us here in the commentary booth. Marcus Lott. Marcus, number 23. Played a lot of rugby on the island growing up. A lot of games with the Tide. Well, that one's straight into touch, so we're heading back to, uh, to the half. Uh, Uvic really need to stop, stop the bleed here a little bit. They've been under pressure, and the one chance they got to get some territory down the field, and they kick the ball out on the full, and we're going to go back for a scrum. Well, rugby is a game on momentum. Momentum and mistakes. Hmm. <coughs> Parada, playing great, by the way. Again, I just can't, uh, I want to call out Moe Parada for the great game here. He's playing at scrum half. Taking over for Reed Watkins, not easy. Get well soon, Reed. So Dominant scrum. scrum. Penalty, penalty advantage. Yeah, Luca Bradley just having a field day there on the loose head side for Burnaby Lake. Another half break, and offloading Oof. contact. We'll go back for the penalty. A little too fancy. Penalty for Burnaby Lake just inside Uvic's end. Ethan's tapped and he's golf. Must have saw something. Let's put the ball deep. Burnaby Lake needs to uh, D up here. And they're going to have to play that out. If they put that down, it's a goal line dropout. Yep. That won't be disappointing for Burnaby. Just keep turning the screw and putting the pressure on. Yeah, they need to get to the line. Some of the Burnaby Lake players are looking a little tired there, walking to the line where they should be jogging. All the momentum in the world when to keep the game flowing. We see Angus Boyd Parker. Nice high ball. Yeah, a couple of players lost that one in the sun, I think. Yeah, that's going to find touch. Falls right down between Parada and, uh, and McLean. Hard to say at this point, with so many injuries to the Premier team here in the second half, I don't know who the preferred centers are, and I know that uh, at the start of the half, certainly in the first half, Neil McLean probably wouldn't have been the preferred inside center, but he's played well the last two or three games, and former Burnaby Lake Premier captain now back in the yeah. roster, and just add a little bit of extra leadership back there, uh, helping out Ethan Turner, especially at the absence of Reed Watkins and uh, a few others that have, uh, that have made big impacts here in the game. Neil's been great today. He has been. I see a crossing penalty there. Not hard to miss him in those boots either, bright orange. <laughs> Let's 
So Boy Parker a chance to uh, ease the pressure here. Puts it deep. Finds touch just in between the half and the 10. I think you, Vic's going to go deep. What about you? Yep. Overthrow. That's the risk you take. That's two or three of them they've had that way. And Chase McCrum is a bowling ball. The pride of Ritchie Brothers Financial Services, one of the club sponsors. <laughs> He's carried really well there. You know, I was telling, uh, geez, who was I with last? Curry Hitchborn, I think, a few games ago. So we were talking about Chase McCrum. And had never played rugby. He was actually a bodybuilder and uh, worked with Mike O'Toole at Ritchie Brothers. And Mike brought him in to play rugby just before COVID. Now on the Premier team, a mainstay. So I looks like... I think Lockhart McGregor's stolen that one in that breakdown. It's done really well to get over the ball. Yeah. Burnaby looking really, really threatening. They just they, they just seemed energized now with the last few minutes of the game with a couple of tries under their belt. And they've had a lot of UVic guys, guys in that ruck. <laughs> now, this is something that UVic do quite often. They can box kick quite well. It's an organized chase. They'll be competitive where the ball comes down, but Ethan's done really well. I'm going to come back for a penalty. Offside. It must have been offside at the breakdown. Yeah. Well, the right foot, there's a better direction for him to kick. I think last time, uh, last kick of his was to the other side, and actually that one probably didn't get the right the distance he wanted either, but Lemke's giving him about an extra eight yards here. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if the ball was caught that far back. Well, I guess the ref's always right. That's what Chris Asmus tells me. <laughs> to the back. Uh, Burnaby stayed off that one. Sun seems to be in the eyes of the Burnaby Lake uh, backline right now. Maybe they need some of that uh, boot polish there we used to use playing football when I was a kid. Something to uh, keep the sun reflection out of your eyes. Ooh, Bryce Warden. Well, there's so just much rumbling. energy in the Burnaby attack at the moment. They're just threatening every time they got the ball. They just look really comfortable. Everybody looks threatening. You vicar under pressure here. Luca Bradley and Chase McCrum have uh, added some energy here to this mm. Burnaby Lake pack. Everything's going in the right direction for Burnaby now. You've got to do something just to stem the flow. They're falling off a few tackles, two miss there in that, that one carry. Clear out's good, quick ball, lots of options. A multiple phases now for Burnaby and a turnover in contact and it looks like Dylan Cleaver on the far side he's got almost no support and we've got another turnover and Burnaby will look to play Gamage working really hard over the ball and play on Well, it looks like we've got time off here. The players receiving treatment over on the far side from Burnaby. Is that Jack Bolton down? I think after that furious Last five minutes, everybody's taking a moment to have a bit of a break. 
including us here in the commentary booth. Well, we'll say, Aaron, it's good to see you. It's been a while. Cheers. As we met for coffee there a couple months ago, but. Now they're getting back into it now. Looks like everybody stayed on. Oh no, it looks like there is one change. Dan Josick is on the field. Is this Dan from the Premier Reserve game that we watched yes, earlier? Yes, it is. Dan fended at least five players in the opening passage of the uh, Premier Reserve game. This boy's got some power. He Another is. threat out, out wide for Burnaby today. He's got some speed, that's for sure. Looks like, uh, who's been taken off here in the Burnaby Lake? Is it Ethan Turner? No, Ethan's still on. Well, Burnaby Lake attacking on the far side with Kimi Vunataraga. So it must be Ezekiel Rossetti has been taken off. <clears throat> Turner at the back door to McLean. Burnaby Lake does a pretty good job protecting the ball. Uvic is uh, very, very quick. Very complimentary towards their, their play around the breakdown. They're constantly trying to disturb things. Oh, oh you know what happened? Moe Parado is taken off and Ezekiel Rossetti moved to center, along with Cass Kosovar brought into uh, the forward pack. Cass getting his first premier time. Uh, it's going to be a yellow card. Someone's down. Did you see what happened? I, I don't know what the yellow card was for. Well, I think, you know, over those, Uvic are doing a lot of work at the breakdown to try and get hands on the ball. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if they've been caught out just a few times. Sarah maybe getting a little bit frustrated. He's signaling for a maybe a deliberate knockdown. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. somebody's played the nine and knocked the ball down in the, in, uh, in the same passage. Looks like they're number eight. I believe it's Murdoch Casey going to the back of the end zone. So Cass Kosovar, his first Premier experience, a guy I think he originally from Kelowna or Kamloops. Spent some time in the Premier Reserves here. And I thought was being brought in uh, or put on the bench to spare out Bryce Warden as he Bryce played almost every minute of every game so far this year. As well spent uh, uh, some time there with the Canadian Selects. So I was going to say, Craig, yeah, so Bryce went to Seattle for the Selects He did, today? yeah, he went to Seattle to and then he was uh, stayed down there and trained with the Seawolves for about a week as well. So. Mm. Very good. And now um, appears to be at number six, which he must just be loving because <laughs> this will be the first time he played anything other than tight head prop in his whole life. <laughs> so. Very good. I'm actually I'm getting to the car going to Seattle myself tomorrow. You were saying uh, that? Yeah. Christian Esslerhausen and myself, we're going to go do some coach development with uh, with a really solid crew of coaches down at the Seawolves. Mm -hmm. They've had a good strong start to the year, two wins. Uh, they play in Utah today, I believe, oh, this nice. afternoon. Yeah. Well, wish you the best of luck. Where are you guys staying down there? Oh, bed and, uh, not bed and breakfast, uh, Airbnb. An Airbnb? Yeah. I've been a little leery of Airbnbs lately. Have you seen the price of hotel rooms? I have, but I find the Airbnbs world. aren't too much cheaper. And every time I go, I'm underwhelmed. The mm. last few times I've used an Airbnb in various cities, I've been underwhelmed by the Airbnb. Yeah, but you've got way higher taste than I do. Oh, come on now. Does everything have to say live, laugh, love on it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was a strong bit to be scrum going forwards. That yeah. If they kept a little bit more control, they probably well, walked that walk underneath the post. The ball Maybe even a penalty try. But if I was a betting person, I would say they're probably going to power game this one. Yeah, it looks and like they're in. Go. That's another try. I think Uvic look just about spent now. That's yeah. I think that's Albernaz, by the way, with a hat trick. Having a field day with the students. The guy that said he was retiring from rugby, I believe. Uh, every year. He told me he was retiring at Williams yeah. Lake this year. <laughs> So that try is going to make it 36-27, I think. Good on you, Lucas. Ethan Turner lining up what should be 
quite a simple conversion. And Burnaby within striking distance of putting 50 points on the scoreboard. Oof, heavy shot from, I believe that's Jackson Jones on Lucas Albanos, but Lucas has controlled the ball. You think a little bit tight here. If Burnaby play wide off this next phase, they might beat them on the fold. Here they go. They're going to play with a little bit of width, and there's something yep. on here. Yep, there it is. Trumbly oh, in. that last pass just didn't go to hand. No, it didn't. It was, uh, was going to come back even if Vivian Faraga did catch it. It was a little forward. Yeah, so Ubik really struggling. I, I don't know if they're just the, that trip on the ferry. Maybe it, they don't get as much energy, but really didn't fold around that last ruck. They got to move with a little bit more, more pace just to, to nullify that attack on the far side. But they got really tight. And that's sometimes uh, just a cue of a team that's getting a little bit tired. A few years ago, we did some stats. Uh, Every team, it was it was a premier team, so premier and reserves that crossed on the ferry mm. based on normal points for, points against, and then what they scored over there. And the ferry uh, was just under a 12 point yeah. uh, point difference. So if you you know if you usually score 20 and let in 12, in this case you would let in 24 and score 20, or you know mm, score could... 14 and let in 18. So, but I'm not a math guy either. So not me neither. Work, so. Not in the math game. I believe you. Oh. Bent arm penalty. Oh. Wow, okay. Okay. Oh, 10. Yeah. Damage is going to go quick again. Offside on the bent arm penalty? I, what was that? What was that call? Oh, Kimmy might be in trouble here for a late one. So, yeah, not 10 from the free kick. Free kick. Not t Burnaby went 10, so Sarah came back and allowed a, a full penalty, which was taken quickly. And I'm, I thought I saw Kimmy hit um, hit a little bit late there on Boyd Parker. So we'll see how Sarah deals with this. His hands in his pocket, and that's a yellow card for a late tackle off the ball. Well, it uh, gives Vigivic an opportunity. We'll see what Uvic choose to do off this one. I think it, all th other things being equal, I'd probably go scrum uh, with one less back defending off that. It might give you an opportunity. Like Uvic have got to score tries here. This, kicking this one isn't going to help anybody. But it looks like they might just tap and play. There they go. Crossfield kick off the first phase. Risky. Dylan Cleaver's got the ball. Oh, and that might be a deliberate knockdown. Penalty only by the looks of it for the moment. Sarah's going to talk to the uh, Abercrombie on the far side and see what he thinks. Knock on. Penalty, though. Oh, he has given him a penalty. I think Uvic have just got to try and play a little bit here, put some phases together, see if they can make this numerical advantage appear somewhere. They're spread wide here. They got number 23, uh, Marcus Lott, almost to the touchline here on the far side. Oh, that one's not very clean. We may have lost possession here on the goal line. There's a lot of bodies in there. A lot of bodies. Can't see from here. Oh. Something happening. There's some yelling from the sideline about some foul play going on in there. We 
wait for a signal from the referee. It's pretty untidy from Uvic. They really want to look after that ball. They are going to get it back. Scrum to Uvic. They've made really hard work of the last couple of minutes since the yellow card. From Burnaby Lake, I'm taking as much time as possible to set up the scrum. Mm. Let the clock tick away. Now the obvious space is probably on that far side mm -hmm. with a winger in the bin. Yep. So we'll see how Burnaby choose to defend this. Uvic at the moment stacked really tightly behind the scrum, the all, all on this side. Now will somebody appear in that space? No, is the answer. They've lost the ball at the back of the no, scrum and got it back it. again. It's really untidy. That is as untidy as it gets. Now they are going to go into that space. Juking their way through. Held up. Is that a mole? I don't think yes, it's coming out. Yes, says Sarah Turner. Well, defender better be late. Well, again, if I'm Burnaby Lake, putting that ball to Ethan Turner, kicking it as far as possible, taking every extra ball on the side of the field and hiding it. <laughs> Kick it into the dog park. I don't know, Mike. It's comfortable. I think the boys, just let the boys play. Just let the boys play? Let the boys play. Not with this amount of time left. You got to assume, though, uh, you know, again, in the second half, I think Burnaby Lake's had the better of the play, but you always assume that the students are going to have the fitness advantage in the second half. I love that you call them the students. Are they not the students? Well, they are, but I love that you call them that. It reminds me of the good old days when I used to be a student and yeah. play student rugby in a men's <laughs> league. Yeah, it's a, it's a good way to differentiate between them, two of them, I guess. I could have called them the Vikes, I suppose, but... Um, yeah, you know, you have to assume the fitness is there. I, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not, but there's a, a real slew of injuries and unavailabilities. Burnaby Lake does not have the depth uh, currently today um, that they've usually had. So, yellow card coming back. I forgot he was still out. <laughs> I'm going to admit, so did I. Well, now Uvic has a numerical advantage. Now they do. Looks like Murdoch Casey rejoining us. It's a great name. Well, we'll see how uh, Cass Kosovar does here in the front row at tight head. We've got Lucas Acano in the blue headgear on this side of the scrum for Uvic. Collingwood graduate. Oh, Lovely really? young man. One of your guys. Aspiring lawyer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Can also play nine. Oh, really? Yep. Uvix get the scrum penalty. Oh, they should have tapped and went there. I think they still might, but... But you lose the surprise. Yeah, couldn't agree more. You gonna change their minds? Something. At this point, I go line out. Okay. Will Burnaby defend the back of the lineup? That's what I want to know. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> there's been uh, one uh, lineup that Uvic has used successfully, which is there's just nobody from Burnaby Lake guarding where they bring him down, and he goes forward. Overthrow. Ooh. Don Baptista. They're going to play. Terrible pass. And a knock. Uh-oh. Well, now that couldn't have gone worse for Burnaby Lake. Don Baptista, the uh, story of... Uh, Highs and lows. Oof. That was, for you, that was a tough passage of play for Burnaby. The boys did quite well there. Jeez. Dom was, uh, did a good job of scooping it up, but they rushed the pass a bit. Okay, we've got another sub coming on. Tom Refuse, Premier Reserve Captain. Coming on for Baptista. Slowly making his way to the scrum. Well, this will be his first premier action of the year. Coach Francis Denny emptying the bench. Tough for Burnaby to defend here. The posts are in the way. They have a player in the Simbin. And the last scrum didn't go so well. 
No, it didn't. Good scrum from you, Vic. Oof. <laughs> the move from number uh, 14, Morgan DiNardo. Oh, Neil's not going to want to see that one tomorrow. No, I will be finding a clip of that and texting it immediately. We love you, Neil, but oof. Kick is up. It's wide. Uvic playing uh, with a sense of urgency now. Was that Donato who scored that one? Uh, number 14. I believe that is him. So that makes it 45-32. He's making the commentator look good. <laughs> one to watch. Certainly one to watch. Yeah. A 13-point game. Oh, Ethan wants to play. Ooh. I'm not sure if anybody else was ready. No, Lots of space to counterattack on this one. Here we go. Not Start sure. your engines. Not sure what that was all about. Angus has gone for another crossfield kick. Falls into the hands of Dromgul. Not a lot of people back in the UVic backline on the far side. If they could uh, could have got that kick up, that would have been an opportunity. Still, uh, they're just finally getting the uh, winger back on that uh, that far side. Tend to just play Pistons. It's a nice slow ball. It's a dangerous way to play the game though, isn't it? Depends if you're just trying to cut out time. McLean finds the seam. Good offload. Into Scotty Barr. Great clear out. Ooh, Uvic guy is... Chase uh, has been so good since he's been on the field. Chase McCrum is a great rugby player, just a great athlete. Great hair. Ooh, that pass went wanting. Number 13 having some issues there for Uvic, unfortunately. Played a pretty good game so far. That's Lockhart McGregor. Mm. Definitely one to watch for the future. Head coach Scott Manning speaks really highly of, of uh, Lockhart. Another young player. You know, I think um, he's probably 19, 20 years old. Yeah, the UVic centers did really well going against uh, the veterans, Neil McLean and Scotty Barr. I think that's the last we're going to see of him. It looks like uh, Morgan Donato's gone outside center now. Well, another scrum here for Burnaby Lake. Yeah, Dylan Cleaver very close to picking that one up off the ground. Um, good to see Dylan playing university rugby. I've known Dylan a number of years. And his dad back in the Nanaimo Hornets days. An old Nanaimo Hornet. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. You know, there's a lot of question marks there with uh, Cass Kosovar and uh, being named to the Premier Team here this week. And I think he's answered them. Pretty solid scrummaging from the uh, the young guy. Drum goal. And Danny Josick. God, he's got good feet, hasn't he? He's got some speed. Good firefighter. Saves cats. If your cat's in a tree, you call Dan Josick. He'll scamper up there and get that. Albernaz takes a good shot from someone there. One of the uh, front rows, I believe. Can't see the number, but great shot. Yeah, I think Burnaby just need to keep playing. You know, if the danger is that Uvic are looking for a lot of turnover ball now, they, they need to chase the game a little bit. Well, see, that's why I would say Uvic needs that turnover. If I was Burnaby Lake, I would slow things down a bit and just play some safe rugby and not give them that. I'd let Bryce pick it up and go sideways by one step and go down, and then Albernaz do the same and just run out the last four minutes or so. Four minutes of that? Yeah. Yikes. You don't teach a four-minute drill at Collingwood? No. Oh, see, I do. Oh, really <laughs> <laughs> well, this could be it. Good clear out. Oh, unlucky you, Vic. You deserved a little bit better out of that one. Sarah's seen a player not to rolling away. Mm -hmm. Got to roll out. 
Vunataraga back on the field yet? Mm, he's hanging out over on the touchline over there. Doesn't look like it, but probably soon. He's eyeing up both touchlines. I think this, the wind is going that way, mm -hmm. which is probably why he's going for the longer kick, and he struck it really well. He can kick. Oof. And here comes Kimmy. Bunataraga back on. Burnaby Lake at full strength. Well, Chase McCrum's lineup's been pretty solid so far in the second half. He's only had a few opportunities. Going to his main target. Luca Al Lucas Albanos has taken probably six lineouts in this half. I mean, another crossing penalty. Yeah, they just, uh, they're not producing that ball the right way. It's being passed instead of ripped. I think Uvic have just got to go for it now. They're putting to speed the game up, play as much as they can. Yeah, I think there's a good chance they're going to quick tap there. No, I thought he was, uh, he was looking around, and I thought there was an opportunity there. A lot of big Burnaby Lake forwards kind of walking at this point. Yeah, they're going to take a little bit more time off the clock. Burnaby won't line that. <clears throat> nope. Burnaby Lake doing a great job of getting the ball back to the line out as slowly as possible. I don't know. They got, for some reason, put in a new guy, a new ball. It's not how I would have done it. Uh -oh. oh, Dan Josick read that one. It, oof. <laughs> An offside way back there. Who would have been offside there? Well, if that bounces, right, right, stays right, stayed in. in the middle of the field. Kimmy's going to go for it. There's no way Kimmy's kicking this one. Nope. He's done a good job. He's beat the first defender and offloaded in contact, and we're off to the races. Rosetti. Line break. Good offload. Oh, big break. Go on, Bryce. Noted flanker, Bryce Ward. Go on, Bryce. Oh. oh. <laughs> Tripped up by... Uh, Number, I think it was a replacement winger that came on. Uh, Uvic penalty. Here we go. Can they get the ball quickly? It was Dylan <laughs> Cleaver. Bryce is not letting go of that very quickly on the ground. That's why we're going to go another 10 meters. Danger for Burnaby. Uvic are playing. Yeah, Burnaby actually a Warden and Albernaz on the ground. Or sorry, Johnson. This is Donato. He's quick. <laughs> Lucas Ocano. This tackle from Tom Refuse. Burnaby have flooded that breakdown. And they won the ball. Hands off his feet. Player Marcus Slot is off his feet. Oh, he'll be really disappointed in that one. Calls from slow it down from the crowd. <laughs> it's a smart call. <laughs> I think Bryce needs a break. Albanoz is having a slow walk on the far side. Oh, I think guys. they would have appreciated a line out on that side of the field, and now they're going to walk <laughs> all the way over here. There's going to be one slow setup for the line out, I'll tell you right now. Nolan Shelley coming on. Ezekiel Rossetti coming off, so I guess okay. Nolan to scrum half? He seems to be holding his shoulder a little bit. Went down hard on it. <clears throat> and Jared Bevins into the game. His first premier action since joining Burnaby Lake a few seasons ago. Jared's uh, fiance, Christina, one of the up and coming referees. Christina Lovett has uh, had a lot of accolades recently. Oh, Ethan Turner maybe going to scrum half. Well, he's Nolan at 10. Yeah, it looks like it. Uvic look like they've emptied the bench as well. We've got Matthew Bennett on at full back. To the back. And Luca oh. Bradley with the kick. <laughs> Luca enjoyed that one. A wry smile as he skews it off the outside of his right foot. Nicely done. Well, big win for Burnaby Lake there. 45-32. Collect the bonus point. I believe you, Vic, collected one bonus point in the loss. So a good game overall. Aaron, who do you got for uh, man of the match for you, Vic? Forward and back. Go forward and back. Oh. Forward. Jackson Jones, I think, had a really solid performance. Mm -hmm. Really good first half. Uh, I think he scored a try over in that far corner, uh, played a full 80, um, really positive rugby player. So I'm going to go with Jackson Jones for my choice for a forward. Um, 
back's a tough one. I mean, I, I have just for that step and that untouched try, I've yeah. got to go with Morgan Donato. I think he had a solid performance. Uh, really showed up in the second half. I'd love to see him getting more touches on the ball. I think he's just a threat every time he touches it. Mm -hmm. So those are going to be my two picks. Sounds good for Burnaby Lake. Are you asking me for both? Yeah, both. Ooh. Ethan Turner for the back. Mm -hmm. Good call. Lucas Albanos for forward. Both great calls. Both great calls. All right, well, Aaron, we're, uh, we're going to sign off here. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Steve Batty Foundation. I know mm -hmm. you and the whole Batty family are here today yeah. uh, giving out uh, the, the first installment of the Steve Batty Memorial Fund. Is that, uh, sorry, I just had a brain fart here. Apologies. Yeah, Steve yeah, Batty Memorial Steve Fund. Batty Memorial Fund through the Canadian Rugby Foundation. Uh, you can find it on their website. Uh, so Steve played for both Uvic and Burnaby Lake. Um, and we've started a fund in his name after he passed it a few years ago. Uh, the first disbursement will be going out today to the UVic player, which has been chosen uh, by a selection panel and the uh, UVic coaches. So Eden Lewis uh, will be receiving a check for $750 today. Nice. Um, and we will be presenting a Burnaby Lake player at your awards ceremony in about a month's time. Yeah, or so, right, April, April 13th. Time. Um, so yeah, listen, people can't speak highly enough of of Eden has been chosen um, based on some of the values that Steve had when he played the game around generosity, around uh, courage, um, and just all around good human being about giving back to the game, being a tough customer, and, and people speak so highly of Eden, so I'm really excited to, uh, to make uh, an award in Steve's name um, and keep his memory alive. Um, so we'll be doing that with both teams. When we retire to the bar. Sounds great. Well, if you, uh, yeah, if you would like to donate some money to the memory of a tremendous human being and a, and a fantastic rugby player, uh, you know, Steve Batty Memorial Foundation, uh, available on the Canadian Rugby Foundation's website. So he would have loved today. He would have loved that game. He would have. Yeah. He would have. A so couple of line breaks, I reckon, and probably some, some, uh, some steals at the Ruck as well. Oh, yeah. No, he would have had a great time out there. So, uh, all right. Well, we're going to sign off. And uh, thanks for being with us. Mm. And we'll see you around. Pleasure. Thanks for having me, Mike. See you, Aaron. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks, buddy. Bye-bye.